17 victories, I think I saw, or something like that. Yeah, I guess I couldn't tell you, but um, yeah, it's been a pretty good few years. I've found a formula that's worked. I have a coach, and I train abroad for about nine months of the year in an international training group, and it's uh, been working pretty well. Yeah, it's been a real whirlwind with the Olympic gold. How is it working and doing your thing, and uh, you know, winning and doing well, and then suddenly you win a gold medal, and then you know, you're, it's almost like you're a different person. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I wouldn't say that it was suddenly. Um, you know, I went to the 2012 Olympics and I got a flat tire and didn't really do well there. Um, and for me, I made a goal after that to want to go to Rio and want to win gold. So I was on this four-year journey, and for me, I had been working towards it every single day for four years. And so to actually accomplish that goal was pretty incredible, but um, also believable. Yeah. Do you uh, do you have a goal going forward now? You're pro, you're looking at and what's the lifespan of the, of the pro triathlete? Because I know there's some other people coming up behind you, always somebody nipping at your heels. Oh yeah, um, you know, there's a bunch of younger athletes that are really good and improving and you know, I, I feel like I can still improve, so I do want to stay in the sport. I want to go to Tokyo, um, but more importantly, I really want to have a family with my husband, Patrick. But, um, that's not something that you can plan per se. So um, we pulled the goalie, and you know we'll kind of see what happens from there. <laughs> that's a good way to put it. Now I don't know how people really know this, but you weren't, weren't a triathlete from the beginning. Maybe people, a lot of people in your story, you swam in high school and then track on the side. And yep. your sister was quite was yep. maybe more the runner. <laughs> then you came here, walked on to swim, yep. and then were recruited then to run track. Um, yeah, you know, I, I walked on the swimming and diving team here, and um, my high school track coach said, I think you'd be good at track. You right. should join the team. And my swimming coaches were kind of putting me in that direction. They had a little bit of talent when we do some dry land activities. So um, I kind of got nudged that way. And um, after a year, I ended up being on a full scholarship and, you know, NCAA All American in track and field and cross country. And we've got a tremendous cross country and track team here from yeah. the beginning. And so then tell people how you really were discovered and, and kind of recruited to become a triathlete. Yeah, USA Triathlon has a college recruitment program right. where they go out to universities and look for swimmers with a running background or runners with a swimming background. Yeah. And I fit that mold. Sure. So, um, you know, they got, they called me up, Barb Linguist, and she heads up the program with USA Triathlon. And she said, we think you'd be good. She said on paper, you're better than I was, and you know I think you can be an Olympian. And I kind of laughed at her. You know, I was like, ah, uh, you know, I wanted to be an Olympian when I was a child, and I just wasn't good enough. As like, a swimmer, exactly, you were yeah. Okay. So, you know, in swimming, I I tried and tried, and you know, I didn't even make junior nationals as a yeah. kid. So, I just kind of thought it was. Uh, I didn't believe her. So I think, you know, something that's been pretty incredible is USA Triathlon having that belief in me and yeah. that's really allowed me to get into this sport and have success. And then talk about getting into bicycling because I know that it's a little different. A lot of people are familiar with Ironman where you just sort of ride yep. on your own, but the type of triathlons you're doing, the Olympic and then the pro triathlons, you're riding in a pack. Yep. Right? Like Tour de France racers and have to draft and get wheel to wheel with people. How difficult was that for you to really get <laughs> used to that. It's super difficult and um, it's something that I'm still working on because I didn't grow up riding a bike, you know, I never had clipless pedals or anything like that. So um, Tom Schuler, who I think is going to be here mm -hmm. tonight, um, he helped me out a ton with uh, just the first part of how to learn how to ride a bike and how to be in a pack and it, you know, it was super scary and I was falling over at stop signs all the time yeah. and, um, sure. you know, it's something that was really difficult for me. Like crashes in the middle of bumping into people's wheels? <laughs> How often yeah. do, they, do they crash in the pro, um, in the pro races? Yeah, you know, um, a few times. You know, I had a, a fall in 2013 yeah. that um, cost me the world championship title. Okay. And you know, so so it definitely happens uh, more when it's raining and um, right. super technical courses. Um, now that and course in Rio was super technical. Just yes. Watching it, is that the? Had you ridden that before? Didn't they have a preview? Yep, race exactly. Yeah, they before? had a um, a test event okay. one year right. prior, so I got to see the course and ride the okay. course then, and um, super steep hill with a super technical downhill. Was it too hard a course? In your mind? I liked I mean, it. Pro, um, they, even the pro bike racers were going down. Yeah, the, they had a pretty tough course. Yeah. You know, I feel like the triathlon course was okay. safe, 
and um, you know, yeah, it was different. Um, but it, you know, I feel like it was a really good course. It showed you had to be a really strong swimmer because it was in the open water. You had to be a strong cyclist because you had to go up this huge hill and. Um, you also had to be a great runner, so I think it was a very fair course, and um, yeah, it made it exciting. Yeah, it was exciting for a lot of people to watch. Now, where, who's going to claim you, as we were laughing about this earlier? Yeah. Because Gwen grew up in, uh, in Waukesha, yep. came here for school. Now you live in the Twin Cities, and you were saying that Minnesota is trying to claim you. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm not sure. You know, I, I call St. Paul just because I've been living there since 2012. Uh, my husband Patrick got me to move there and I remember at the beginning I really wanted Minnesota to claim me because they weren't claiming me. Um, but now it's, uh, I'm kind of torn, you know, I Why have... Why did you want Minnesota to claim me? Because um, I felt like that was my home and it, it is my home right now. Like when I go home, that's where I go. And so, you know, I have these two different hometowns, I'd say. Yeah. Is the road riding as good in Twin Cities as it is around Madison? Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, Twin Cities has some of the best cycle cycling um, in the United States. Yeah, so um, you know I, that's one thing I really like. One thing I loved about Madison was there's so many people out riding a bike, and the same thing in Minnesota is when I go out, I see a bunch of people whether they're doing it for commuting or exercise. Um, it's just that's the kind of thing that gets me pretty excited. Well, to put in a plug for the bike fed, I know they worked hard to sell Wisconsin as a great place, yes. not just to, uh, uh, to ride bikes, but also the business end of it. We've got track yeah. located here, Saris, yep. Pacific Cycle, I can tick off other names. And that combined with some of the tourism that surrounded uh, bicycling is phenomenal. Bike Fed runs this event now, the Raw, right across Wisconsin. They start in Dubuque, and it goes all the way to Kenosha in wow. a day, 180 miles. Ooh. So maybe uh, they'll recruit you. It's a bit long. I'm going to stick to like yeah. Super Week or you know some of the shorter crits. <laughs> yeah, you don't get the old guys taking a long ride. Well, Gwen, thanks for coming out and uh, enjoy your evening here. And I think we'll turn it over to the TV guys Perfect. now and let them all try and grab a little, a little time with you. Thank you. Awesome. Hey, Gwen, um, can you tell us, you know, how amazing did it feel to be able to finally have that gold medal? You know, to be the first U.S. women to win it too. Yeah, it was pretty incredible to win the gold medal. It was something that me, along with my support team, had been working for four years. You know, my coach invests daily. My husband gave up his career to support me and travel abroad. So I had a bunch of people just really invest in me. And every single day we'd wake up and say, is this going to help me win a gold medal or is it not? And we had to make a decision to, you know, always try to do something, something that would help me um, win that gold medal. With that being said, it was really difficult. And to be able to actually perform on that one day out of four years is is pretty um, remarkable and something I'm, I'm proud of. Has it sunk in yet? You <laughs> had a little time. But yeah, like, I mean... You are the best in the world. <laughs> um, it sounds funny when you say you are the best in the world, but you know, having that gold medal, it, it did sink in and it sunk in pretty quick. And I think that's just because I, I was saying for four years, this is what I want to do. And I had my mind set that I was going to do it. and. Um, you know, going into the race, I had said if I got silver or bronze, it was going to be a disappointment, which is pretty crazy. Um, but that's just how my mindset was, and that's what I wanted to do. Any outside of the like training and the preparation in Rio and stuff, did you have any new experiences like after the race, or like what was one of your favorite things in Rio that happened aside from winning gold? And all that? <laughs> um, I think you know I had a great time in in Rio. I didn't spend a lot of time there. I flew in four or five days before my race and before the race I was kind of just in my uh, hotel room feet up. I actually didn't go to the village because the triathlon course was about two hours away from the village. And after the race I only stayed there for one day and flew home. But you know what I enjoyed most was just how many people were out cheering. Triathlon was a free event and the course was just lined with fans the entire way and to have that support was something that you don't get at a lot of races so that was pretty special. My last question, um, we're from TMJ, so obviously close to the hometown. Anything that you want to say to friends and family there? Yeah, um, first I'll say hi to Lance. I know that he couldn't make it, <laughs> but it's nice to meet yeah. you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not talking. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, I just thank you to everyone in Wisconsin for all their support. You know, my family, my immediate family was able to come to Rio, but all my aunts and uncles and friends, not a lot of them were able to come, but I know they were cheering back home. So I really appreciate that. And my coworkers, coworkers as well from Ernst & Young. So just thanks for cheering. Thanks for letting us talk to you today.
You're welcome, yeah. Hey Gwen, I got yeah. another one over here. Any special shout outs at UW? <laughs> um, just a shout out to everyone that's a Badger. I love um, being from, calling UW-Madison my alum. You know, it's something I, I flew in and I saw the Bucky Badgers and Wisconsin stuff and um, I got really excited and I don't think my husband quite understands because it's definitely the best university. So. Um, it's pretty awesome, yeah. yeah. And you know, you live in Minnesota now, and you said you're, you know, a Minnesotan technically. But what is the number one thing that you miss about being in Wisconsin? <laughs> um, that's a good question. You know, I think, um, you know, I miss definitely family and friends from Wisconsin, and as well, I miss all the. Um, not everyone in Minnesota roots for the Badgers and the Packers, so um, <laughs> that that's something I definitely miss.